Thank you for joining today as we continue our journey to the cross on our side by side. We come now to what is a very strategic moment on this journey. It's the time when Jesus sits down with his disciples to share in his final final Passover meal, and which will, of course, be their final Passover meal as well. This is the break point between the past and the future, or the present moment will be that point. Let me read it for you, uh, some of this passage. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called the Passover, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to put him to death, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered into Judas called Iscariot, who was of the number of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers how he might betray him to them. And they were glad, and they agreed to give him money. So he consented and sought an opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of a crowd. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. They said to him, Well, where will we have you have us where will you have us prepare it? He said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters, and tell the master of the house. The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished. Prepare it there. They went and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. Here we have the king coming to make new or renew this new covenant with his subjects, but doing it in secret. Do you know, it's not unlike that first Passover, is it? When you think about it, the darkness, the evil that was around, seeking to erase the lives of the people of Israel. And yet, that secret work of God in that dark night when the angel of death passed over the lamb whose blood was 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 put on the doorposts and lintels of the houses of those who by faith trusted in the promise of God. The Lamb protected them. It was a strange foreboding night, wasn't it? You can imagine what it must have been like that night when the cry went out across Egypt of all the deaths of the firstborn, right from the Pharaoh to the, to the very humblest of homes and the animals and everything. And here now we come to this dark night No streetlights, of course, in Jerusalem. And so you can imagine this kind of secret meeting because Jesus has got to come there in a sort of a secret way and he sends his disciples ahead to arrange the room. Maybe something he had prearranged with the man who owned the property. But he has to do so secretly because he knows that the enemy is out to destroy him. But in passing, notice how Jesus borrows everything throughout his life at those key and strategic moments. I couldn't help but seeing that in this passage again. Remember, going back to his very birth, Jesus borrows a stable in which he is to be born. Later on, at the very earliest point in his ministry, he borrows a boat from Peter to become his pulpit and also the basis from which he will then call his disciples to become fishers of men. He borrows a child to come and stand in the midst to teach them strategic and important lessons about how people need to become this, this simple trusting child. He borrows a coin when he wants to teach an important lesson about pain, taxes about whose authority rules the heart. He borrows a donkey when he wants to declare his kingly sovereignty going into Jerusalem. And then he borrows an upper room when he wants to inaugurate his kingdom. I think this is so important. And maybe there's something here that's worth looking at again at another time. Maybe a little series for us. But I do think it says something to us in our day. When people feel they must hold on to everything. Jesus, the one who said, Foxes of holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man is nowhere to lay his head, teaches us about not holding on but releasing up to the King of Kings, trusting the King of Kings 
And when the King of Kings takes what we have, he transforms it, whether it's a stable, a boat, a child, a coin or a donkey, he transforms it forever or an upper room. Now that original rebellion that was instigated by Satan is reaching a climax. So verses 1 and 2 speak about how they want to put him to death. It's as clear as that. It's dangerous for Jesus to enter the city. Satan has entered into Judas, we see there in verse 3, who's now looking for a way to betray him. The Passover, which looks back and forwards, reminds us of the, the coming Messiah. Jesus knows this is his final night before his death, but he's in control right to the very end, to his last breath. It's full of purpose, the life of the king. And this new covenant, given in sign and symbol, which in one day's time will be fully, really confirmed, we also can affirm it whenever we meet to celebrate that in communion. And so this key moment then, When the kingdom is established at his death and everyone who will accept him as their king will know by forgiveness and through his blood they can be included in it. And so when Jesus says it is finished, it's paid in full crying from the cross, he's declaring this is this is it. It's okay. All my citizens coming in are secure. They're secure. They're safe. And the drama heightens, doesn't, as Judas, Satan's agent, Right in the inner circle. Isn't it interesting that Satan has his hand in the inner circle, but he is so unaware that by the very means of his evil, he is bringing about the great purposes of God. God overrules evil for good. Oh, how we need to remember that every day when we hear of the injustices in our world around us. Verse 21 says, The hand of him who is to betray me is with me on the table. How close, how intimate. How personal. Wow. Jesus then further teaches about his kingdom. In the end of this, verses 24 to 30, he he continues to teach. Don't operate by the world's standards. Don't live by the way of power, dominance and authority. No, 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 he says. It's by serving one another. And that's what he has done to them. He has already shown that. John 13 tells us about his washing their feet at the beginning. The whole process of serving sets the pattern for his citizens. Can't we imagine that if this alone was to guide all our relationships, what an amazing community we would have. And it does challenge us about that very thing, doesn't it? Still, it's not all going to be without difficulty. This new kingdom that we are part of, God's kingdom, well, we see that there's tensions. Peter will deny him. Satan still is on his mission to destroy, but all is not well. Or sorry, all is well. (laughs) Yes, all is well, even here. For the Lord says, but he says, I have prayed for you, Peter, that your faith may not fail. And you know, the Lord's intercession suffices for you and I in this kingdom. He's sufficing for you even today and for myself as well. And for a time, there will be conflict. Yes, this new day of the kingdom is established, but it's not completed. It's that now, but not yet, that we talk about. The Lord has provided everything we need. But this is who we are. We are his people. We are brought into this new covenant. God's law has been written on our heart, as he would said it would happen in Jeremiah 31, 31. That's what this is all about. This is a most momentous moment in the whole history of God's purposes and plans of redemption history as we speak about. So as we think today on this Thursday, it is when we're listening to this, it's that time we're thinking about the Passover. We're thinking about what Jesus did. And I am hoping and praying that the Lord will really minister to your heart, reminding you of just what he's done for you and how convincing that is and how you can I can rest secure in that. There, there are mysteries here and we will never plumb the depths of this yet. But this just takes us a little bit more around it to sit around that table, as it were, in the word with Jesus and his disciples as one of his disciples. And I just trust that the Lord will bless you as you do that. Father, I do pray for us all that at this time as we are looking to you and waiting on you, that you will 
Just minister these fresh and lovely, wonderful truths to our heart, reminding us that it is such a special thing to be part of your kingdom, a kingdom that will never end, a kingdom that is yet to be fully completed by your return, but which is still very much alive in our hearts spiritually by the work of your Spirit. And help us, Lord, today to live as citizens of that kingdom and witness to the kingdom of this world. In Christ our Saviour. Amen.